Is it possible for the deeds office um, can to make, make an error, an error okay. on the title deed? The chances of a deeds office making an error on on a title deed are very are very slim because remember it doesn't only go through one person; it goes through yeah. multiple people. Yeah. So it's not like uh, it's Lebu that's saying that okay, it's email and then I'm signing and then I'm sending it to the next person. It goes through a whole chain of people for them to actually do that that that, 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 that whole process. Yeah. In fact, it doesn't even start at the deeds office; it starts at the attorney. Because remember, me as Lebu, I can't say that. Hey, I'm going to the deeds office to, to, to transfer a property. I can't do that. I need to be an attorney in order for me to, to be able to do that whole process. Mm. So firstly, it needs to start with the attorney. After attorney, it goes to the deeds. And then with the deeds, there are multiple people that still need to go through the whole and verify. document and verify. So chances of them making an error are really, 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 really slim. Man. Not unless if there was a brown envelope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, but you'd need you'd need a heavy brown envelope for that one. Bro. Yeah, maybe. Ah, you yeah, know those, those those big brown envelopes, <laughs> maybe, maybe no. because. But the chances of them making an error are really, really, really slim. Yeah, because even when a mistake does happen, they would literally send start it back. send it back and start the whole process. I know of a person whereby they started the whole process just because there was a little error. So 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 the deeds office they do make sure that. Uh, there is no error. Okay, Houdini is saying that uh, is it wise to pay off the house full in cash? So Houdini, man, it depends about what what game are you playing. For us, for us personally, we are, are, are big on refinancing. We are big on credit. So look at it this way, and 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 we also need to understand the game. You need to understand the game before you take such a decision. Every time someone tells me that you want to pay it off faster. I ask myself then, what is the purpose of refinancing? Because if I'm paying something faster and then refinance. I refinance at the end, and then the question would be then, why did you pay it off? Again, hence I'm saying that we do not talk about this content. When it comes to property investing, we do not go deep. Uh, but but fortunately, I'm not saying us, right? Because we, we, we go deep. Trust yeah. They must say they don't go deep. <laughs> we don't know who they are, but they don't know they don't go deep. Yeah. Right? I mean, even in our last workshop, right? The yeah. previous one, we were talking about that paying yeah. faster. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about that. We we're talking about paying it faster. And then we also talked about the interest rates right now with what's happening and where does that leave us as property investors. So what we do is that we host a series of workshops throughout the year and we talk about different topics and we call different players so that they can add value to your journey so i like i like, I like to when someone was like gents how many workshops do you need to attend do i need to attend so that i can start <clears throat> so that i can start investing and we said you need to attend all of them so last year's workshops won't be the same as this year so you just need to constantly i mean it's the same thing with us right now like we said we told ourselves that we won't get to a stage whereby we think we know everything mm. hence even when we find someone who's killing the game first thing that we do we reach out we want to know more so I th the thing with property investing is that we do not have that spirit of learning and that's where it hits me because now that's where we do such mistakes whereby i wanted to finish it off faster but i didn't really understand why did i want to finish off faster mm. so the question again would then be why do you want to finish off so if it's for me to live in personal i'll finish it off faster but if it's an investment again i did mention that I'll be defeating the whole purpose of refinancing, so I wouldn't finish it off faster. Yeah. I uh, hope you answered, Houdini. Uh, Zuleika is saying, I was selling. Um, Mola is saying that, hello, brothers. Um, is it wise to pay a huge deposit on an investment property? Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. So, so 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 here's the thing about paying a huge deposit on a on a property right mm. it's like saying that let's say for example right most of the time people pay a huge deposit in order for them to pay less in terms of their bond right yeah. but now there's something that's called return on investment or roi that every property mm. investor needs to know so return on investment tells you how hard your money is working for you so i'll give you a classic example that we always do right that if say for instance i'm having hundred thousand and I'm putting it in the bank okay. or not even I'm putting it in the bank. I'm putting it in any investment. 
the yeah, first thing that yeah sure so the first thing that i want to know <laughs> is that if i take 100000 and i put it into the, this investment how long is it going to take me to get back this uh, particular investment so say for instance if the return on investment i do not let me start it here anybody that's recording this i hope you're listening to this <laughs> i'm not an advocate for saying that a return on investment of 50% but we're just making this just for example purposes right if say for instance i'm saying that my return on investment on the 100000 is 50% i'm going to say 100000 multiplied by 50% right this means that i'm going to be getting 50000 so now it's going to take me two of these deals or if i'm renting the property out it's going to take me two years in order for me to get this hundred thousand back right because now it's the fifty thousand plus the fifty thousand now what hand what ends up happening is that a lot of people don't keep track of how much they're investing into the property so now say for instance now you've invested the hundred the same hundred thousand into a property but you don't calculate the return on investment or how hard your money is working for you only to find out that once you are in it for the next five years, you are only getting 1% of your money back. It even happens whereby it happens. Whereby somebody gets negative 5%. Yeah. Because now, we're not paying attention to the number. Sure. Now, let's, let's, let's not even go to that side, yeah, negative. Let's not even go there. Let's stick to the 1%. Now, we are saying that I'm getting 1% return on investment. Now, we said that what? We said that... The main thing of us investing in the property or investing in any type of investment, I need to understand that how long is it going to take me to get my money back. Now, if I say 100,000 divided by 1, that means that it's going to take me 100 years in order for me to get my money back. So that's where the game changer becomes, especially if you're going to be asking that, is it wise for me to take more money and put it into the property? Now, the thing is, the higher the return on investment is, the faster it is going to, 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 to get your money back. Now, something that would be more reasonable for us, especially when you're looking at flipping, is 25%. Now, if I'm saying it's 25%, if I'm having 100,000 right now, and I'm saying that I need at least 25%, this 25% means that I need to go through four deals in order for me to have double of what I've actually uh, had in the, mid, in the uh, first time. So if I'm having, if I'm starting my, my property investing journey with 100,000 and I'm saying that I'm getting 25% return on investment, this basically means that I need to make four deals, I'm going to do four deals in order for me to get another 100,000, in total I'll be having 200,000. So putting in more money, might not be a problem for some people because return on investment will still make sense but now the problem is that once your return on investment goes too low or to a point whereby it's going to take you a really long time for you to get your money back i would say that please don't put in all of your money into that property i'd rather look into purchasing another property that will give me a higher return on investment and i understand that with some people what happens is that they can see that their bond prices is up. So what they end up doing is that they take the excess money and they put it into the into the bond into the bond account. Once they put it into the bond account, this means that they will be paying lesser in terms of their monthly their monthly bond, which ultimately might mean that you might be now be running at a cash flow positive. What I would say is that if you are in such a deal, please do not go into that deal because at the end of the day, we want to invest our money and we're growing our portfolio at the same time. Now, what we always say is that if the property is making, let's say, 100 rand on a, on a yearly basis, some yeah. people are making 100 rand on a yearly basis. Now, 100 rand on a yearly basis, does that really encourage you to purchase the next property? For me, it doesn't. So. Sure. So I was what I wanted to do, right? I wanted to give a practical example. Oh, you also wrote hundred rand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. I wanted to give a practical example to what you mentioned, right? Yeah. I wanted to give a practical example to what you mentioned. Okay, there we go. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. There we okay. go. Yeah. So what's happening here is that I was running at a cash flow negative. Mm. So cash flow negative. Let's say I was. Is this at hypothetical a, or did you really write? It's, it's hypothetical. Okay, it's sure. hypothetical. I think if we can just put that the sleeve up first. Yeah. yeah. It's. I, I want to tie a knot with with Gana, Gana, who asked who asked that question. Mola. Yeah, Molo asked that question, right? So I want to 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 put it what you said. I want to put it into in its practical form. So we bought a property. Let's say all of us we contributed. We bought a property. We realize we realize that we're running at a negative. Mm. Now we are sitting, we are having an agent meeting, 
we're having an urgent meeting at 9 19 it's, it's 7 16 minutes past 7 mm. on tuesday we're having an emergency meeting we're saying guys we're running at a loss with that property so how about we 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 we, we bump up the cheese so that we can flip that loss and the loss can be as let's say it's it's 1500 so additionally what we're saying is that uh we're collecting can we say that we were collecting we were collecting seven thousand we're collecting seven thousand and then our expenses are our expenses are what's this what's this seven thousand minus one point five uh seven thousand minus one point five yeah that would be five thousand five hundred five thousand five hundred yeah so income is at five thousand five hundred expenses is at seven thousand mm. now that's a problem we sat down and then we were like how about we put in a bigger deposit to make this thing make sense now what happens then is that we broke even mm. so we're breaking even so this is how a lot of people would say they're breaking even that the bank comes back we notice that we are making 100 rand let me say 100 bucks divided by 100 rand divided by 12. Mm. so now instead of us running at a negative of 1500 we are actually left with eight rand so i know a lot of property investors won't even say that now we're cash flow positive eight rand what they'll say is that we are breaking even yeah they yeah it's better it's better to say that i'm breaking <laughs> even than saying that i'm making eight rand on a monthly basis with my property i don't know why yeah. but but anyways let's look at it that way so if we are then to say the eight rand times the 12 months <clears throat> we are looking at 99 rand 99 cents so if you're rounding it off again it gives you that 100 okay, rand yeah. so if you're looking at this 100 rand now basically what happened then with that deposit yeah 100,000 you then looking at us it, the difference what it what it made from us moving from 1,500 now we are getting 100 rand annually mm. so then now we'd really question if